What's good? It's Wu. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. We've got Saul Canelo Alvarez, 55 wins, one loss, and two draws, defending his WBA and WBC super middleweight titles versus Billy Joe Saunders, 30 wins, zero losses, and Billy Joe Saunders will be defending his WBO title. So there are three out of the four major titles at stake here. Now, this 168-pound division is, is pretty new. It, it started in the late 80s, and since then, we've had a lot of really good fighters from both sides of the Atlantic in this division, from uh, Roy Jones Jr. and Andre Ward to Joe Calzaghe, Mikel Kessler, and Carl Froch. Now, the latest sensation to that list would obviously be Canelo Alvarez, who first made a statement at 147, knocking out former title holder Carlos Baldemir. Canelo won titles in 154 and then eventually 160. And I wouldn't in my wildest dreams have thought that he would be surging in the 168 pound division in the way that he has. You know, before he fought Triple G, a lot of fight fans wanted that fight to take place so they could see the 154 Canelo finally really meet his match at 160 versus Triple G. Although Canelo obviously lost to Floyd Mayweather prior to that. And it had some pretty close fights versus Austin Trout, Aris Landy, Lara. But that two fights with Triple G was really a turning point. Now, I know that there's a ton of controversy. I thought that Triple G won the first one. I thought that the second one could have been ruled a draw. Well, the first one was officially ruled a draw, and the second one was awarded to Canelo, which really altered the trajectories of both of their careers. I mean, imagine how much different Triple G's legacy would look if he was awarded the, the win in the first fight. There might have ne never even have been a second fight. Or if he was awarded that second fight, then you would have different narratives going forward after those two fights. But make no mistake, Canelo Alvarez exceeded expectations in those fights in particular. Now, when he first flirted with 168 after that, he picked his opponent pretty carefully. It was, a, it was kind of a paper champ, somebody who wasn't seen by anybody as being one of the true elites of the division, but it was a guy with a belt in Rocky Fielding. And I thought that that was more or less going to be an example of the best type of fighter that Canelo could handle at 168. Well, since then, he has not only flirted at 175 light heavyweight, beating an aging, but still serviceable Sergey Kovalev, the former crusher, but then he returns to 168, and he takes on an undefeated champion in Callum Smith, where I feel like a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking could lead people to say, well, who's Callum Smith, and who has he beaten? Well, there were four champions for a while. There was Gilberto Ramirez. There was, you know, Caleb Plant. There was David Benavides, who was holding the WBC champ belt at the time. And then Callum Smith held the WBA title. And none of these four guys were fighting each other. So here comes Canelo, who is carrying and bringing with him all the juice that he's carried from the two fights with Glovkin, from the havoc that he wreaked at 154, Although, till this day, he still hasn't fought either of the Charlo brothers. But also, the momentum that he was carrying from knocking out Kovalev at 175 and beating Daniel Jacobs back down at 160 in a competitive but clear, in my opinion, decision victory for Canelo. So he's got all this momentum, and then he's taking on Callum Smith, where going into the fight... A lot of people were thinking, wait, 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 let's take a look at this because this might be bad news from Canelo. We've got a solid 168 champ in Callum Smith and Canelo more or less just blew this guy away. He outclassed Callum Smith and that was really a jaw dropper to a lot of fight fans. Like we knew Canelo was good, even great. We didn't know that he would just be knocking off champions that were significantly bigger than him like this. And so since then, his declared mission is to capture all four major belts at 168. He wants them all. And now he's got two of them because David Benavidez lost his WBC title on the scale. So the WBC 
made their title available in that Canelo Alvarez versus Callum Smith showdown. Or should I say Callum Smith versus Canelo Alvarez showdown since it was Callum Smith bringing the WBA title into that fight and then the WBC title was vacant. So Canelo has made his intentions clear, which is also bad news for anybody at 160 who wanted the, who wanted the shot, right? Triple G obviously wants a trilogy fight with Canelo. Jamal Charlo wants a crack at Canelo. Demetrius Andre, I'm sure, would love to fight Canelo. Well, Canelo is right now entrenched at 168, and his next opponent is the WBO title holder, Billy Joe Saunders, undefeated. Now, the assumption for most... And I think it's a bit of a lazy assumption because styles make fights is that because of all the havoc that Canelo has been wreaking in several weight classes that he is going to just roll over Billy Joe Saunders like he rolled over Callum Smith and maybe even like he steamrolled the totally outmatched Avni Yildirim who was his last mandatory challenger. And I'm not even sure I recall Canelo even really getting hit significantly in that fight. That was a big mismatch. But Billy Joe Saunders is one of the more elusive fighters around those weight classes. Caleb Plant is another, the IBF title holder, who would be the next in line if Canelo beats Billy Joe Saunders and captures the WBO title. And Billy Joe Saunders is actually kind of resenting the idea that matchroom Canelo's promoter now, since he left Golden Boy and has signed an extension with Eddie Hearn Matchroom. Eddie Hearn also promotes Billy Joe Saunders. And Saunders is looking at some of the actions that he sees Eddie Hearn making. And he's thinking, why the hell are you already starting to kind of lay out the floor plans for Canelo versus Caleb Plant when here I am. Hey guys, I'm about to challenge Canelo Alvarez and I think I'm going to beat Canelo Alvarez. So Billy Joe Saunders is looking at this like, what the hell? And I get it from Billy Joe Saunders perspective. Now the thing about Billy Joe Saunders, who is a multi-division champion now, he was a champion in at middleweight. He held the WBO title and uh, retained it, defended it successfully like three times and then goes to 168, is, or I should say are, because there are two things. It's the inconsistency in performance. Now, he's winning all of his matches. He's not the most impressive-looking fighter, fight by fight. You're not going to get blown away and wowed. Like, Billy Joe Saunders' fights aren't always a uh, must-see TV. He's an awkward southpaw. I mean, southpaws are generally awkward, you know, to begin with, but stylistically he's also awkward so that makes it kind of double awkward so he's very difficult to look good against but also just the quality of opponents now i'm talking more at 168 than at 160 in fairness at 160 he did beat uh andy lee uh willie monroe jr who are basically the same guys that you know glufkin was steamrolling when he was wrecking shop at 160 david lemieux is another one hard-hitting david lemieux and that is actually probably uh billy joe saunders crown jewel to this point if you want to see a fight that really spotlights the gift that Billy Joe possesses, watch him versus David Lemieux. And this was in David Lemieux's hometown. This was in Quebec, Canada. David Lemieux got taken to school. Like this was one of those just hit and not get hit. He made David Lemieux look plodding. He made him look slow. He made him look like he was just two steps behind Billy Joe Saunders. He didn't finish him, but he won damn near every round. Again, I think that that was Billy Joe Saunders' career best. But again, styles make fights. Hitting David Lemieux is nothing like hitting Canelo Alvarez. But in fairness, hitting Avni Yildirim and even Callum Smith is not like hitting Billy Joe Saunders. This is interesting. By the way, another one of Billy Joe's best wins would probably be uh, like seven years back versus Chris Eubank Jr., who, you know, I think he was still kind of green at the time, 2014. But Eubank's career has also been kind of frustrating to watch because you're not really seeing him go against the guys that you want to see him go against to really test himself. I mean, he did retire an aging and faded James DeGale, but I'm not seeing what I want to see out of Chris Eubank Jr. at this point, especially lately. But when you look at what Billy Joe Saunders has done once he went from 160, where again, he was holding the WBO title, to 168, 
he won the WBO belt at 168 in a vacant title bout. And a couple things. The WBO, in my opinion, is the lesser of the four major belts. You can look at the lineage of all four major belts and you usually see that it's the WBO who's got the who the hell is that type of champion. And even more to the point, when you capture a belt, sometimes it depends on how you won that belt. Like, did you knock off like a, a Triple G or in the case of like Vernon Forrest back in the day at 147? Did you beat Shane Mosley for the title who beat Oscar De La Hoya for the title? Or did you win it in a vacant title shot against another guy that nobody's ever really heard of and earn the title that way? Well, in the case of Billy Joe Saunders, he won the 168 pound WBO title versus Shafat Isufi. And since then, has defended it against Marcelo Caceres and against a 40-year-old Martin Murray, who retired afterwards. So it's not like he's fighting the world beaters. Like, people could look at Canelo, and some people still, for some reason, want to criticize his fight-by-fight -fight strength of schedule as if he's cherry-picking or avoiding. Now, I do think that he's managing like anybody manages. Even Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather manage careers fight over fight. But you look at strength of schedule and you're going to be hard pressed to find somebody who is fighting tougher guys fight after fight than Canelo. Again, he fought Triple G twice. And although I think that it was just outside of Triple G's prime, I wish that that fight happened a year or two prior, more like 33, 34 years old, not 35, 36, it's 37 years old. But Canelo went 24 rounds with Gennady Glovkin. I mean, damn. And didn't hit the canvas once. Think about that. Meanwhile, again, Billy Joe Saunders, since that impressive David Lemieux win, has fought Charles Adamu, Shafat Isufi, Marcelo Caceres, Martin Murray. Like, only two of those four guys even have a Wikipedia page. And yes, a lot of people believe, and I, I kind of, you know, believe this as well, that Billy Joe Saunders does kind of fight to the level of his opponent. I just have trouble imagining somebody fight the guys that I just mentioned and then flipping the switch to then compete against and beat a Canelo Alvarez. Like, it's, it's just difficult to picture that. Even if, stylistically, on paper, Billy Joe Saunders should be a very difficult fight for Canelo. He's taller than Canelo. We're talking 5'11 against like 5'9-ish. The reach is about the same. But you look at the sweet science guys that Canelo's gone against. Floyd Mayweather, Eris Landy Lara, even Austin Trout. Canelo has struggled noticeably more with that style of fighter than he has versus other styles. Glufkin not included. He obviously struggled with Triple G. But both of these guys, Canelo and Saunders, are going to be hard-pressed to find sparring partners who can effectively mimic what their upcoming opponent is about to bring to the ring. But I really do believe that habits matter. And I think that Canelo has just developed the better habits over the years. And it's just tough to picture Billy Joe Saunders just pulling a rabbit out of his hat on call after fighting a litany of... Not the who's who, but who type of fighter. I, I mean, tell me if I'm missing something here. So here's how I envision this one playing out. And by the way, I will say that the odds are just disrespectful. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders is going off at a plus 450. Canelo at a minus 700. That makes Canelo like a 7-1 to one favorite. Like, that's, that's kind of disrespectful. I, and I get it. I mean, it's name recognition. It's fame, notoriety. A lot goes into how these lines are placed and where people are placing their money. Also, if you are kind of telling the story as far as following the money and seeing where boxing would rather, or should I say who boxing would rather have win this fight, Canelo, you would think, right? So then he could fight Caleb Plant to unify all four titles and then, you know, do whatever he wants to do after that, assuming he beats Caleb Plant after beating Billy Joe Saunders. But betting odds aside, I think that Billy Joe Saunders is going to give him problems early. I think that Canelo's going to find him difficult to close the distance on. Canelo doesn't have the quickest feet. He does have some of the best upper body movement and head movement in the sport. Like, even when it's subtle, sometimes he'll, you know, 
turn it on and start really stunting on his opponent where he just starts doing the whole Pernell Whitaker like whoop, whoop, whoop. Like he'll do that. But sometimes it's a lot more subtle where it's like kind of changing levels, kind of just a little dip here, a little dip here, a little bend in the body. You know, surprisingly, Andy Ruiz, who's now working with Team Canelo and Eddie Reynoso, does some of the same subtle head movement. But when Canelo is closing the distance, he, it, he is kind of like looking punches off and rolling with the punches that do land so it minimizes impact. He's doing all of the right things in terms of defensive responsibility. But Billy Joe Saunders is a great mover and he's a great kind of improviser. Like you're in the moment and he just instinctively knows where to put his hands, where to put his head, where to place his feet in order to stay out of harm's way and in order to basically win the rounds. And that's what a lot of this comes down to when you think about it. There are knockout artists, but then there are also gifted round winners. Devin Haney, I don't know if he's going to turn into a, a more prolific knockout artist, but what we do know about Devin Haney at 135 is that he is one of the better round winners in the sport, at least as it seems. We haven't seen him against elite competition yet, but you get the type of fighter I'm talking about. Eris Landy Lara, great round winner. Floyd Mayweather, one of the greatest round winners of all time. Caleb Plant, same thing. It's guys who know what they need to do so that it's 10-9 them. So Canelo is fighting one of the better round winners in those weight classes. Up at 175, by the way, Dimitri Bivol is another one. And I do think he's going to have trouble finding Billy Joe's head specifically in the early rounds. So I think that Canelo's actually going to make an early commitment to the body. I think the first couple rounds are going to be kind of slow. Might even be pretty tough to score. I think that the first few might be able to go either way. One of Billy Joe Saunders' Achilles heels is that he tends to slow down in the later rounds, even in the fights that he's doing really well in. He beat Chris Eubank Jr., but slowed down late in that fight. And Canelo... I'm not going to say he turns up the volume late in the fights, but he does fight in a very spirited way in the later rounds. He even did so in both fights against Gennady Glovkin. He didn't fade too much. I mean, he was obviously very, very tired in both fights. But Canelo does enough and he frames his punches in a very action-packed and dramatic way to where... He looks like his punches are just splashing on the other guy, whereas the way that he moves away from punches look like punches are missing. Billy Joe Saunders does some of that same stuff. He frames his punches a little less effectively than Canelo does. They don't look like they splash in the same way, but in terms of doing the defensive things to make it look like the aggressor is just missing and missing badly, I think that Canelo is also one of the best game planners in the sport and so I look for him to start making that investment to Saunders' body early because he will have trouble finding the head to where in the middle and late rounds, he'll start having more success finding the head. I think that Saunders' volume is going to go down and not up in the middle to late rounds. I think he's going to look more worn out than Canelo. And I think that the body attack plus the fatigue plus Canelo's defense as he starts closing the distance because I don't think that Billy Joe Saunders is going to be able to hit Canelo with ease either. And because I think that the jab battle might be kind of even here. Like, it wasn't even, obviously, when Canelo fought Callum Smith. Canelo could have won that fight with the jab alone. And it was almost indescribable how somebody at 5'9 was hitting somebody at, like, 6'3 with the jab with that type of regularity. It was, it was something to behold. But Canelo, I think, learned so much from that early fight versus Floyd Mayweather that he sees the way that Floyd would jab the body early in fights, and a lot of people watching the fights are like, why? what is so effective about this damn jab to the body? Well, we just saw Jake Paul knock Ben Askren clean out, right? And what did he start with? A jab to the body. So I look for that to be something that Canelo's going for early. And again, skill-wise, I think that it's going to be apparent in the early rounds that Billy Joe Saunders is right there with Canelo. I think that, again, the first three to five rounds will be tough to score, I think it's going to be a little easier to start scoring these rounds 6, 7, 8, 9. 
And I think that the benefit of the doubt with the early to middle rounds is probably going to go to Canelo, judging wise. I'm not calling any conspiracy here. I'm just saying that that's kind of how boxing seems to work in a lot of these signature fights featuring signature fighters. Now, we have seen things go the other way. I don't expect that to be the case here. And this fight is in Arlington, Texas, not in the UK. So when you hear the crowd noise, it's just going to seem like a very, it's going to sound like a Canelo party. You know what I'm saying? Very different environment than if this was in the UK and you've got the whole crowd singing Sweet Caroline before the fight. I think that these things are going to subconsciously, and I'm not, I'm not faulting the judging here. I'm just saying that in the close rounds, I am going to expect more than half of these rounds to go to Canelo if they appear even. And again, I think that Canelo's commitment to the body and his habits are going to lead to him taking over in the middle to late rounds. I think it's going to be a it's going to be a close, maybe even controversial fight to score, but I expect Canelo to win here via decision maybe 116 to 112, 117 to 111. I don't expect a ton of 115 to 113 action, although I wouldn't be totally surprised if Billy Joe Saunders exceeds expectations and fights a relatively even fight to the naked eye. Biases aside. But I do think that those habits and Canelo's overall strategy are going to lead to a, I'm going to call it a competitive, but somewhat clear, maybe just outside of the realm of controversial, maybe a little bit more convincing than to make it a even controversial fight for Canelo Alvarez. This is going to look very different than Canelo versus Abney Yildirim. Very different than Canelo versus Callum Smith. It's going to look a little more like Canelo versus Austin Trout, but up at 168 versus a bigger guy who knows how to move. But again, I don't think that suddenly hitting the gym like crazy, shedding weight, getting ripped, for this one occasion is going to make up for the inconsistencies of the past and the lack of strong fight by fight schedule that Billy Joe Saunders has had. Now, there are some ways that that can work for you. When you haven't been in the wars that some of these guys have, you preserve some of your freshness. And maybe there is something to be said about that, but I think that there's going to be more to be said about Martin Murray, Shifat Isufi, Charles Adamu being your opponents as opposed to fighting Callum Smith, Triple G, Daniel Jacobs, and so forth. So I'm going Canelo via decision here, but I can't wait. Let me know what you think about Canelo Alvarez versus Billy Joe Saunders. Who do you think is going to win the fight? And what do you see this fight looking like? Like, I don't think this, this isn't going to be the most eventful, sexiest fight. I don't expect knockdowns. But if those knockdowns do come, I'd expect it to be Billy Joe Saunders getting sat down on the canvas. Not getting knocked out, but perhaps a knockdown or two. But yeah, leave your comments in the comments. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. I'm Wood. Thanks for tuning in.